Glendale goes right through IBEW Local 98. Let's hear it, everybody. Got a great lineup of talent for you today. Uh, I'll turn the microphone over to uh, the experts, Mike Missinelli, uh, the quarterback of today's broadcast. Michael, all yours, Jack, sir. Jack, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome yes. to IBEW 98 and the pep rally as we get ready for tomorrow. Uh, what should be a Eagles victory and another Super Bowl parade next week. There we go. So I got my cohorts here, Rob Ellis, Mark Farzetta, and we're just gonna kick this around a little bit. We've been through all week, we've been through all the statistics, uh, all the X's and O's, all the ups and downs of what can happen in this game. And I just wanna throw one stat out there, which defines the game for me, and then I'll throw it to these guys. I can't get past this statistic. The number one passing offense, which is the Chiefs, versus the number one passing defense, which is the Eagles. It's happened three times in the Super Bowl. The number one pass defense has won each game by an average of 31 points. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> now, I, I, I don't know what that means because these statistics are not compiled with Patrick Mahomes involved, right? <laughs> However, I think it says that if you have a better defense against a passing-oriented team and you control the line of scrimmage and you can run the ball and they can't, you're probably going to win the game. Rob? Uh, Rob, what, Mike, what, what do we always talk about? Win the line of scrimmage, right? Eagles offensive line is better than the Chiefs offensive line. Eagles defensive line is better than the Chiefs defensive line. That's usually where the game's won. Ultimately, it may not look like that early, but I think the Eagles are going to wear them down from an offensive perspective. Play a little keep away, if you will, Mike, even though it's not really... You know, ingrained in their DNA from the Andy days, I think they will run the ball. They ran it 44 times against the Giants, 44 times against the Niners. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they're going to keep with that game plan, and I think it's ultimately how they win the game. Mahomes is going to get his. We know that. He's an X factor. He's going to get his, but I think the Eagles offensively are going to be able to do enough against this Chiefs secondary to where they win. I don't think it's a, a, a laugher. I, I've talked to way yeah, too so, many people. So these they're last not going to win weeks. by 31 points, Mike, is what you're saying. All I'm saying is, <laughs> and, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, we're a little too overconfident in, in the Delaware Valley, <laughs> which is we're usually looking for reasons for things to go wrong. Yeah. This is kind of the opposite this It's this the week. total opposite yeah. of it. Mark, I haven't talked to one person this week who's afraid of the game. <laughs> and that's like nuts yeah. to me. I'm that's, afraid. You are afraid. No, but nobody I've talked to, like everybody's walking around with this air of confidence like it's a foregone conclusion, which scares me a little bit. But I, I guess what we, we know in Philly is the Philly fans know when a team is really good. Yeah. That's the yeah. one thing they really know. They, they, they can read the tea leaves mm -hmm. of, you know, this team is good. And, and, we don't have, and, and before it was like, ah, we don't know they're good enough. Yeah. Right? But they know that this team is good. Well, Nick Foles and Doug Peterson and that entire roster of all 53 players that Howie Rosen put together five years ago has given this city an air of confidence because if Nick Foles can go out there and beat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, who else is going to stand in their way? Is it going to be the guy that we know, that we've known for so long here in Philadelphia, Andy Reid? I think we're all going to sit back and relax and wait for that epic mistake he makes with his time management in this game, and we'll capitalize on that. Plus, if you look at getting after Mahomes, nobody does it better than the Eagles. Robbie just mentioned it. You talk about the 70-sack season of the Philadelphia Eagles going up the adorable only 55-sack season <laughs> of the Kansas City Chiefs. You start to feel yourself just a little bit. And let's also face it. We've only seen this team lose one game this season with Jalen Hurts as their starting quarterback. So the confidence should be running wild in this game that whatever adversity the Eagles face, whatever they face in this game, they're going to be able to handle their business to a victory. All right, let's talk about the adversity because I want to play a little devil's advocate here. <laughs> um, so when we look at the matchups and where the Eagles would have the advantage, they obviously have the advantage with Hassan Reddick rushing against Andrew Wiley the right tackle. Um, it, it, here are the, the, the perils of that when it comes to Mahomes. When, when Hassan Reddick takes that, that, that slant rush where he, he goes off the right shoulder uh, of, the, of the right tackle, Mahomes is like one of the only quarterbacks who can like duck inside that yep. and throw these flip passes or yeah. throw these jump passes <laughs> and find some red jersey mm -hmm. that's open. 
and, and so and and so that's my only problem. But the, the converse of that is, if Hassan Reddick is getting heat, they're going to have to pay special attention to that with an extra tight end mm -hmm. or a running back, which gives them one less weapon that he can find. No, Mike, you're right. Let, let, let's circle back to your first point. I mean, look, he's an X factor. Mahomes is an X factor. You have him. The biggest thing for me in this game, from an Eagles perspective, is you better tackle him to the ground. You don't just flush him out. He lives for that. He's he's the best off schedule quarterback in the game by a mile, and that's saying something. You got to get him to the ground. All right, that's the biggest thing for me. But you're right about that. I mean, that that is a factor in this thing. The other thing I'll say about that too is if they're getting to him or pressuring him and get him off his spot, he is a guy who will turn the ball over. That much we know. I mean, he's, he had 12 interceptions this year, so that's something that, to keep your eye on because he has so much confidence in himself. He's going to force some balls, Mark, where he will make some mistakes sometimes, and the Eagles need to capitalize on that. A, a thousand percent, I agree with that. Now, I was looking at this uh, through the course of the season. The best pass rush that the Kansas City Chiefs saw in terms of being able to get after the quarterback. Now, Patrick Mahomes has only been sacked 26 times, fewest among the starters in the NFL. 26 times. But how much of that is making that circus throw? How much of that is just getting rid of the football? How much of that is just escaping the pocket and gaining a yard or no yeah. gain, whatever it might be? But the best pass rush that they have seen this season was the Seattle Seahawks who only had 45 sacks on the season. That's a great point. It, so you also look at the, the fact that the Colts, they played the Colts, they lost to the Colts. The Colts were another 45-sack team. They faced another team that also had 44 sacks on the season. Mm -hmm. The Eagles are on another planet, and I know that nobody likes to talk about it simply because it's Jonathan Gannon, and it's not like he's working for those sacks. But bottom line is, you don't want a lot of blitzes against Patrick Mahomes. You talk about a 140 passer rating last week against a Bengals team that blitzed him uh, the majority of the game, and he was very much in control of that game. So when you look at this pressure, pressure, you have to make sure, Rob, like you said, that you get him to the ground. Question for both of you guys. We haven't had a chance to talk about it ourselves. I don't get the Gannon hate in the least. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. We were, a lot of people were weaned on Buddy Ryan and Bud Carson and Jim Johnson. That part I get. But if you don't have to blitz and your line gets home as much as this line gets home, what the hell do you care if they're blitzing or not? And the bottom line is they get to the quarterback, they don't give a ton of points up, and they create turnovers. I don't get it. Well, they led the league in sacks without blitzing. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you have to blitz well, if you don't need to? Listen. Uh, well, we work with a guy at uh, Jacob Media, and his name is Seth Joyner. I think he played football a little bit. And, uh, I've heard and, of him. and Seth is really interesting to work with. because, But Seth... I have found from week one to now has been like the side of beef that Rocky tenderized <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes to Rich Gannon. Yeah. Because he was just livid about his lack of aggression early on. And, and so as you go through this whole season, you go, the guy's covered all the bases. He's got to the quarterback with a four-man rush, which helps his back line. And it's made them like the great defense in the league. Yes. So there, there's, there can't be anybody who complains about Gannon at this point and his lack of aggression because he, he has put forth a cerebral defense that that maybe his players made it work because you know maybe maybe their abilities made it work, but but it worked. Yeah. And, and so at this point, you, you can't complain at all. Um, it's really interesting that they're not going to blitz them, obviously. I mean, they haven't blitzed anybody over here, much less this guy. Yeah. So uh, I, I think they'll, they'll play it straight. And it's just a matter of whether this guy can make enough funky plays. Because he doesn't uh, – he'll, he'll hit guys out of the backfield, and, and they've, they've learned to live with that. Uh, Pacheco's been great. McKinnon's been great. Yep. The, the, the hyphen wide receivers, they're, they're, they're okay. They're, yeah. They're just okay receivers. The tight end is going to be an interesting cover. What do they decide to, to do with Kelsey? How do, how do they cover him? W would Kelsey have to help block in this game? I would think not, which means that they'll go with double tight ends a lot. Um, so, like, who's responsible for Kelsey in this game? T.J. Edwards can't cover him. Kazir Roy can't cover him. The only guy that can cover him is C.J. Garner Johnson mm -hmm. because, uh, because Maddox is hurt. So how's that work out? Uh, do you look at Avante Maddox, even though there's a big size differential there? I, that might be a consideration, maybe. Ma but Maddox is, is limping around. Yeah, that's, he is. that's the only thing. Like, I, I, don't, I can't count on him at this point. He was in a boot last week, <laughs> and, and I know he's practiced. I, I, I just can't count on him. He it's, wasn't wearing an open, an opening night, though, Mike. So yeah, you should feel I, a little I, bit better. I get it, but I, like, I, you know, 
I don't know, but I can't rely on us. The only guy I can rely on, and he's a hell of a player. I think he was the, really the second most important acquisition was C.J. Garner Johnson. Yeah, he's a beast. No, well, he's going to be on the majority of the time, I think. But I think with Travis Kelsey, yeah. it's going to be different looks. He's going to get his, though. I yeah. mean, that's the thing. You just can't let him kill you. Where he really hurts you is <laughs> if it's... My man, that's my great, man, that's my great man's shirt. got a Dallas shirt on. Like, <laughs> there may be a digit involved, yeah, yeah, it's, and it's not your number one. It's a claw. Yeah, so to the Cowboys, you're right. The middle claw. Italian. Class yeah, though. Italian. And what do you call it, a hoof? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this is going to be a game where Andy looks to bleed them to death, guys. I think it's going to be screens. It's going to be passes in the flat. I don't, I, like, I don't see a lot. And maybe he's going to lead up to, to some shots down the field, but he's going to be perfectly content with just bleeding you. And that's yep. where the Eagles can't get killed. And that's where Kelsey kills you. It's, it's third and five, and he gets six. But you can't let it happen. So I mean, we're, a little later, we're going to go over some, some prop bets and some, some bets you can make. Everybody's betting this game. And, and I have decided that the point-and-a-half line is there because it, it's, it could kill you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because yeah. I go, yeah, point-and-a-half. The way, the the way people are talking about the Eagles, that's such an easy line. Right. And that always scares me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you right now that I'm taking the Eagles on the money line, and I'm playing it heavy. I like and it. I think they can win by a point. I and like I'm it. not going to get screwed by a hook here. <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, the, the surest prop bet you can make, no matter if you like the Eagles or Kansas City, is that Kelsey scores a touchdown? Yes. Am I right? I would agree with that. I would agree okay, with so that. That's 100%. where I think you can make your money. All right, let's. That or Bradley Cooper cutaways. One yeah, or the other. Yeah. <laughs> or, In the or owner's box with his, uh, with his throwback uh, right. starter or, or jersey. You off. might get a Kevin Hart line. Uh, no, right? can like, we not? Can, can we might, just do it? Yeah, well, he's going to be there. You might get. Oh. I, is I, there I, a prop as to whether or not he actually gets on the presentation stage? I know because he's from you know, Philadelphia. There's a, there's I, if a, I never see Kevin Hart again, I'll be good. <laughs> there's a prop on a cutaway to Kevin Hart, though. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And, and I think it's a plus 225. You, know, you can make a couple bucks on that. Yeah, They're going to cut away to him. There's no doubt. Right, I did talk to him last time. I did talk to him five years ago when he was oh, yeah. trying to get on the stage. Uh, oh. He told me what he told everybody else. The, the man that didn't allow him on stage was very firm. Yeah. Well, that's in his opinion. That's because he was uh, uh, as drunk as a sailor. Yeah, he, may have, he may have been slightly overserved. Yeah, he was, he was definitely <laughs> overserved. Yeah. All right, so now let's, let's look at the other side. I would take a break. All right, we're going to take a break here. I, this is a, uh, an organic show, so I don't, need, I don't know if the regular rules of break supply here <laughs> for our producer, Joe Krause. All right, so we're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to look at the other side on, on what Steve Spagnuolo... When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Mesa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. My name is uh, Fran Salerno, and I'm Managing Director here at DelVal Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Hi, I'm Jim Muehlbronner, Managing Partner at DelVal Insurance Group. Give us a call. We're a local, knowledgeable agency, not an 800 number. Go Birds! Jeff D'Ambrosio doesn't need a special event to appreciate his customers. Jeff shows his appreciation to them every day of the year. Jeff makes sure to stock more new inventory than anyone and guarantees prices and payments that nobody can beat. There are so many reasons that thousands of customers know Jeff is the easy, friendly place to do business. More for their trades. No judgment zone for credit issues. The best, most reliable service department in the country. That's why I like Jeff, and I know you will too. Jeff will satisfy you every day. Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown, Owner Appreciation Event. goes okay uh two out of three ain't bad because he, he either is going to hand off the ball he's going to pull it out and run himself or he's going to throw the ball i'm having my guys go directly at the quarterback and and if he if he happens to hand it off i'm screwed yep. but i'm taking two of three instead of mm. having like everything on, on board i'm going to take him away from running the football i have my guys key on that 
uh, or I'm going to have him in a, a drop-back situation and, and hope that I can get enough pressure on him where he's got to throw from the pocket. You just hit the nerve of the thing that worries me the most because, let's face it, and I didn't, actually didn't think he played bad in the Giants game, but he's been off. He's been a little bit off. He hasn't had to do a lot because the running game's been so good. And, and let's face it, you've gotten up so big in these games, it's hard to know exactly what's going on, but... He's a tough dude, and he'll tell you himself that thing's not 100%, that shoulder for Jalen. There were too many opportunities that were missed in the earlier games that didn't really come into play that will come into play on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to hit A.J. Brown open, if he's wide open like he was, you know, last week or two weeks ago. That's the thing that worries me the most is can he hurt you in the air downfield? I think he's going to run it like he ran it earlier in the year without having the concern of how am I going to hold up the following week. I think the running attack's there if they want it, but it's the passing game, Mike, that scares me the most about the Eagles. Especially if he's not 100% healthy. Yep. And that's where, when my, when my mind goes to dark places, when I start yeah. to worry about how the Eagles can actually lose this game, it comes down to the idea of it actually going to a shootout, but Jalen Hurts not being 100% on the money as we've seen him for the vast majority of the season. So if you just look statistically at this game, the far and away thing, other than just uh, defense, what the Eagles are so much better at than the Kansas City Chiefs is the fact that when it comes to running the football, their rushing offense is 10 times better than what the Chiefs, even with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire coming back, yeah. it, far better than what they could do. They can control the clock, they can get long drives, they can make sure you're keeping Patrick Mahomes off the field by what they do offensively. Uh, here's the case, because I saw the same thing you guys did last week. And, and let, me, let me relate it to our uh, uh, primitive abilities as quarterbacks on the beach. <laughs> All right? And, and, and you know that when, when you feel a lack of strength in your arm and you're trying to throw a long pattern to your buddy Ray, you, you try to... To, to, instead of throwing it on the on the line, you try to hoist it higher you gotta to hump get it, it up to get a more a more of a parabola effect yeah. to carry it there. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought he was doing last week with the long pass. So if I'm Spagnola, I go, I'm going to test him early, see if he can throw it long. Yep. Yeah. And and if not, then they're going to settle on these slant patterns, these sh you know these short patterns where uh, AJ Brown is basically unstoppable. But I can. If I, if I can reduce his passing game to that, then I have an advantage on that. So in two weeks, can he gain the monster strength back? That's a great question. I mean, look, that's the, th there's two things that are really unknowns in this game. Jalen's shoulder and how much better is Mahomes. Now, I'm going to assume Mahomes is close to 100% because I don't know how the hell he was doing it in that, the game against Cincinnati, but he was doing it somehow, some way. Two weeks is, is going to get him close. I don't know about Hurts, man, and, and it is concerning. And if, if that's the case... Mike, if, if it's the approach of slants, you, you're diminishing what Devontae Smith can do for you. You're diminishing something that, you know, Quez Watkins, we even, he's been in witness protection for a month, two months. But he's also a factor if you can get him loose downfield. And that stuff goes bye-bye if he can't get the ball off. Yeah, and you're right. And the Chiefs are weak in two areas defensively. They're weak against RPOs. They're yep. like in the middle of the pack against RPOs. And they're weak against uh, 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 wide receiver ones. Yeah. And the Eagles have two of them. And, and there are two young guys back there that's going to try to cover these guys. So if he can get the ball down the field, it's a major advantage for the Eagles. And if he can't, it, it, it kind of reduces the responsibility of what Spagnola has to do defensively. And they have to win their one-on-one -on -one battles because the Chiefs, when it comes to press coverage, they play almost more press yeah. coverage than anybody in the NFL. So if the A.J. Brown is somebody I have more confidence in being physical at the line of scrimmage, so that makes sense when you talk about the struggles against the wide receiver one. Wide receiver two, especially in this inst instance with Devontae Smith, skinnier guy, slender guy, gets a little bit more physical than people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about a defense that loves that jam coverage at the line, that can throw off timing. And if you are testing Jalen Hurts early, like you said, Steve Spagnuolo is going to do, and he will, then that can throw a lot of timing off in the early goings of this game. I mean, I go back to Spags, too, just to, you know, his history in this game. Go back to when he was with the Giants. I mean, pitched almost the perfect game you know, against New England in, in a huge spot. So, like, I know from a coordinator standpoint, be, whatever you want, if the enemy and Andy, it's, it's hard to know who's, who's who. Right. But they're going to be ready, they're coordinators. We just talked about Gannon. I've been a big Gannon defender the whole year. But do I know exactly how Steichen and Gannon are going to respond in this kind of game? Not really. I don't know. So that's a bit of an advantage towards the Chiefs. Uh, all right. I, a programming note. I've just been handed a note. Oh. oh. <laughs> all right. Your sources? Uh, like my, you said, my, my, sor my, my source is the producer of this show. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so uh, uh, I'll just read it here. Okay. Um, uh, 
POTUS potential call between 11.44 and 12.15. The President of the United States... Call us? Is, <laughs> we, have, we are expecting a call from the President of the United States. What? Of America? What's of, of America. What's what does that it? say, Rob? What does that say? Uh, it says POTUS potential call 1144 to 1215. We will be queued. We will be queued. I, I was going to say, and, what's in this? And we will, we will hear possibly from President Joe Biden. Right, you've been in this. this <laughs> you guys have both been in the business for a long time. This would be a first, correct? <laughs> Uh, this is real? All right. You don't have, like, a Greek oh, friend named Otis, Otis, right? Just, I always think somebody's pulling a gag on me when stuff like you this happens. You know what, happens. Mike? I'm going to have faith. I'm going to buy it, man. <laughs> he's an Eagles fan. So is the first lady. Yeah, yeah he we is. We know that. And, and he's a supporter yes. of IBW98. Correct. And he also loves Jacob Media. I've heard that <laughs> from my sources. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, wow. Well, I was not yeah, expecting well, that when yeah, I got out of bed this morning. Yeah, this is awesome. All right. So <laughs> before we get to the president, like, it kind of just, reduces our importance here. Gee, let's X and O some more. Actually, <laughs> actually, we have the president. Can you just tell him to hold on? We're talking Eagles. All right, thanks. First time, long time. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> I, that, t let's take, like, a, 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 a complete perspective on this season. All right. Uh, because, like, I sit here, uh, we've had time to digest it, but it's pretty flabbergasting to me where this season has gone. Uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, a, a franchise that we complained about for so many years is now going to give us two Super Bowls within a five-year period. Um, but I, I didn't expect this at all. I and mean, I'm just curious, like, at the start of the season, it grew on us, obviously. They, they right in front of our eyes, turned into the best team in the NFC. Yeah. But, but like, like, were you thinking that this was a possibility at all? No. I, I thought they were going to be, they were going to max out at about 11 wins. I thought they could win the division. I think it would be them and the Cowboys kind of going back and forth. And I thought they had a, a good chance to win a playoff game. One. That's it. Be eliminated in the divisional round or whatever, however it played out. But, Mike, no. I mean, I mean, more than anything else, who saw this coming from the quarterback? I mean, more. I, I, I viewed this year as give him a chance. I didn't want Russell Wilson to Deshaun Watson. Give him a chance. And if he doesn't look good, Howie would figure out a way to get high enough in the draft to get one of the studs coming out this year. That's how I viewed this. And I thought he was owed this year, and, and I thought he would improve. But did I see this? Absolutely, unequivocally, no way. Hey, hey, we go back a long way covering sports, Rob. And uh, I, you're right about Jalen Hurts. It's been the key to the whole thing. I, I have never seen an athlete in this town go from – point z to point a yeah. <laughs> like ever like seriously like, you think about like who has become uh, when you doubted their ability going into a year and they turn into an mvp candidate yeah mike not only that along that road that you're talking about he's throwing like grenades at everybody and just oh you doubt at me and he's blowing up villages as, as he goes along i mean he he did it emphatically and, right. and and he's He's the most poised 24-year-old you'll ever find in your life. Yeah. I, I'm a little He's bit older. He's almost annoyingly yeah, poised. I'm slightly older than 24. <laughs> Can't shake him. And, no, and, and, and I am <laughs> as immature as they get. This right. dude no, is I mean, like, I don't see anything like it. Anita Baker, the only two words you need to say. <laughs> He's got a line for any situation. Yeah. He's got a line ready to just fire at yeah. any time. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I had the purpose before anyone had okay. an opinion. Yeah. Oh, my. It's Shakespeare. Insanity. It's insane. I, I don't know. It, it, it's like special that he's, I don't know what training he's got, but I'm, I'm 100 years old and I'm still a goofball. <laughs> you know, and this guy is like uh, the most mature man on the face of the earth yeah. at his age. I, and, you know, I, I think it's worked. Uh, I would like to see him lose up ready, a buddy? little bit maybe eventually. But uh, it, it certainly has worked. And uh, like I, I've never seen anything like this. No, so. like my parents tried, but whatever his parents did <laughs> worked in a big way, man. This guy is. But that's, that's one really good thing. As much as we kind of laugh about it, I, I don't feel like, A, I know he wasn't being a knucklehead for the last week in, in Phoenix. Right. I, I think he's going to be locked in. And, I, and his heart rate doesn't raise, so I don't think, I don't think there's going to be a jitters factor, which can really get to people sometimes in these big games. I don't see it. All right, let's take a break, and um, I don't know if we get to president of the United States or not. I'm in, I'm in the dark just like everybody else. We're, we're, our I, producer, I, I think we have to stay on all day in case yeah. it happens. We'll be uh, available. Yes. It's a special The Road to Glendale show. We are live at IBEW headquarters, Local IBEW 98. <laughs> Great pep rally that's going on right here. I'm Mike Bisnelli with Rob Elfar Farzetta. Back after this.
Post Game Show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post Game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. <laughs> This is an all-timer, yeah. right? I don't know what's going on here with the president of the United States hey. or whether we're, we're, this is a practical joke or not. But I don't know. It's not a practical joke, I'm, Joe. I'm we'll, buying we'll it. We'll see. I'm buying it, Mike. I'm believing it. I, well, I, I what's he doing now? Finishing his French toast? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to called? Joe in Wilmington. It's Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really uh, look forward to going home. My wife asked me, how'd the show go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'll talk to the president. Let's, uh, we, I want to go over a couple of these bets, have a little fun here, and see how you guys feel about these particular bets. And you know, the, the reasonable, uh, normal, normal bets, and we'll get to some uh, some wild uh, ones here. So let's start out with um, team total. Now let's go with the which team will score first. Okay. Okay. So the uh, Philadelphia. Listen, they've been scoring first almost <laughs> all they year have. long, right? So I think this is a solid bet at minus 110 uh, if you can get it. Now, the, in some books, the Eagles are favored at minus 125 to the Chiefs, minus 110. Would you bet that, let's just say it's minus 125. Here's my concern, Mike. If they win the coin toss, the analytics say defer. Kick the ball to the Chiefs. I'd stay away from that. You would. I would you stay away from the Chiefs that would be capable of coming down scoring first? I do. I do. Yeah, I don't see that. I think that's a good bet. I think okay. mine, you have to bet 125 to win 100. You like yeah. that one? I, the I, Eagles I, to score first? I actually do, and I also agree with Rob's philosophy to a point, but I feel like in this game, when it starts, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to get his. I think uh, Travis Kelsey is going to get his. But I think at the start of this, I think this defense is going to be a shock to the system of the Kansas City Chiefs. Simply for what I pointed out earlier when you talk about they're not used to a pass rush like this being in their face. They're not used to having a, being able to have guys back in coverage while still getting pressure with your front four or five. So I think that goes heavily in the Eagles' favor. Yeah. I like the bet. I take the Eagles. All right. Uh, let's move on to team totals. Um, the, the over-under number uh, varies. So uh, with the Eagles, do you believe they'll go over 24 in this game? Yes. Do you believe the Chiefs will go over 24? Yes. Okay, so the Chiefs over 24 is minus 115. Yeah, I Are like that. that's a good bet? I like that. All right, the Eagles minus 130 at 24. Yes, I, I, both of those I'm All right, now let's, so let's reduce the odds now for the Eagles. Do you believe the Eagles will score more than 26 and a half points? I do. All right, well, then you can get that at minus 115. I jump on that. All right, you like that one. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's go with, um, will the opening kickoff be a touchback? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, Mike. You're saying no. It will not. If you look at the history, <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, go for it. There is a strong case to be made for a non-touchback in the Super Bowl. Really? Wow. Yeah. For well, a, guess what? Yeah. You can get good odds on that. Yep. No is plus 130. I'm on it. I am all over it. All what, is right. the, what is I got to know, though. What is, do you know the thinking behind K that? Kicker's nerves. A little shaky? A little wow. shaky. It's the Super Bowl. I'm not worried about Jalen Hurts, but I'd be a little bit worried about Harrison Butker and okay. Jake Elliott kicking off that first time, <laughs> even though they both played in Super Bowls. Little butterflies. <laughs> little bump bumps in the chest, as Kevin Hart would say. <laughs> all right, let's go to this one now. This is the Super Bowl MVP. Now, this is an interesting one, because if the Chiefs win... It's almost a lock that Mahomes has to be and the MVP, Kelsey right? Unless Kelsey goes bananas. Right, I mean, so if you're a Chiefs fan, yeah. you take that all day. Yes. Uh, Hurts, I'm not sure, will the MVP. So let's just go uh, over the odds here. Hurts is plus 130 to be the MVP. No, that's a... Do you it's like a, that? It's a good bet. It's a good investment kind of bet. Yeah, I was going to say return. Yeah, it's, it's a good smart return, future yeah. bet because yeah. you're, getting, you're getting decent odds mm -hmm. on it. I mean, all right. Let's think about this. Other than Hurts, and you, I know you, you might have other guys mm -hmm. you want to reel off. So I don't want to. I don't want to jump you. But yeah, yeah I'm going to go into exotics anyway. Right. So don't worry about I, it. I, 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 I would <laughs> jump away. I think Reddick. 
I would think in terms of Reddit, yeah. Mike, because you can get mm. a really good price on that for a defensive player, particularly a defensive lineman. So I would look long you and hard. You probably at could get a, pr a pretty good price. I don't have the price on, on Reddit right now, but that is a pretty good theory uh, on that. All right, so first of all, I don't understand how people would bet the coin toss as, as much. I, I don't understand people who put who play roulette and play red, I don't red and black. Not but, my but thing. The coin, the coin toss, uh, heads or tails, it's the same. Uh, yeah, that, that's such <laughs> a ridiculous thing. Just throw well, a dart. Man, throw a dart. It's plus 100. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so it's still, it's still a plus odds on that. Oh, my God. Uh, that right, just now. means I'm going to be betting like a drunken sailor yeah. all day is right. what that means. All right. So now let's go with the national anthem length. Uh, Chris Stapleton is singing it, right? Yeah. So the, the anthem number is set anywhere in various books from 119 and a half to 125 seconds. Ugh. So if you go over uh, 120.5 seconds, it's minus 115. If you go over 127, it's minus 154. So the saying it's going to be long. Yeah. I mean, he's a country singer. Does that does that sway anything? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I couldn't I tell you one song that Chris Stapleton sings, but I take the over. <laughs> You're going to take the over. Yeah, oh, this guy? Over. Yeah, over. Yeah. yeah. I don't know any country, but I just have to look at their face. Uh, that guy's uh, an uh, over. Oh, you're going to go over with yes. Chris Stapleton. All right, now halftime show prop. Yeah, this is this, now, this is, is this where it gets interesting with Rihanna. Rihanna, yep. it's big. Uh, I was taking center stage. The uh, number of songs you can bet on. The over, uh, the number is nine and a half songs. Whoa, whoa. If you want to go over, you get plus 115. If you're going under nine and a half songs, Minus 154, a decided favorite for the under. What um, if she does a medley? What if she does a little sampler? Of her, that's, of her a lot of count, right? that's a lot of that songs. That's a lot of count. songs. I'm going under, Mike. Yeah. You going under? Yeah. I'm going to so go over. the price of minus 154. All right, oh, I'm setting my, I'm going to, this is my own exotic prop. <laughs> over under uh, a wardrobe malfunction with Rihanna. I'm going over all day. Wow. You're welcome, America. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask the president about You're that. You're welcome, President Joe. <laughs> All right. And, and finally, let's go with the color of Gatorade. Oh. Now, this is very interesting because, um, I don't know, I can't imagine that they have the odds for like it. All right, so let's start with the highest odds. Um, none. That there will be no Gatorade bath. Now, Rob, listen to me, and Mark. All right. Plus 1,200 on that. Wow. Whoa. Worth a shot. That, that's an investment. That's an investment. I'm uh, on that. All right. Purple. You feeling purple? I, I'm feeling no. if the Chiefs win, it's red. Plus 750 purple. Okay. Clear. Plus 750. I'm liking clear. You liking clear? I'm liking clear. Red or pink. Plus 450. See, that's another small wager I would make in case Kansas City wins. Big red. Chiefs uh, red. Okay. Red. Interesting. Plus 400 blue, eh. plus 300 orange, maybe old school, and plus 165 yellow green. You really can't lose if you make any of these. I'm going yeah, yellow good. green. Yellow I'm going green. yellow for, green. For a plus 175? I've yeah. done my homework. When they were at the NFC Championship game, the Gatorade was yellow. Okay. Boom. See, Easy that's research. Money. That's Easy research money. Right there. I right. leave no stone unturned. All okay. right, so this is some of the prop bets you can bet. Mm -hmm. Let's wind it back to the game now and our general feeling on how this game will play out. Mike, how many I, field goals are involved? Mike, okay, okay, Joe, Joe's climbing in. One, we have something. Here. My one prop bet. I got a prop bet on whether Joe Biden's calling the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It, it, it's it's, a, well, here's it's, my it's plus a million, <laughs> by, by the way. Let me preface by saying yes. I have never placed a bet in my life. Wow. All right. So I'm making one bet on this, one prop bet on uh, this game. Yeah. Will there be a fake punt or fake field goal in the Super Bowl? Oof. I'm saying yes, there will be, and on, on, my, side? on my one, doesn't matter, on my $100 bet, I'll get return of 3800 That's what the odds are? Oh, jeez. For a fake, fake punt field goal or, or a fake, fake punt? field goal. Wow, they're that, it's Will that? there be in the game? Yeah, I actually think Andy Reid might pull one of those out. Uh, yeah, that's my one. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's not bad. That's a pretty good really, one. Really, that's what the odds are? Yeah, that? that's a great bet. Yeah, that's a, that's a monster return. Yeah. 
Hmm. You just yes, please. do a little low number on that and you get that kind of yeah, return? Yeah, that's not bad. I have to think about that one. Uh, all right, so, uh, so in general, I'm, here's what I'm looking at. I'm going to get my prediction out there right now. I think the game is 31 to 30. And that means I think the Eagles wow. will score four touchdowns and, w and one field goal. Meanwhile, the Chiefs are going to have to rely on Butker with several field goals in this game to get to 30. That's the way I think it's going to play out. I think the Eagles' defense will be able to hold them to more field goals than the Chiefs' defense will be able to hold the Eagles. How do you think this game plays out? All right, well, to back up your point, if the Eagles are scoring a lot of touchdowns, that's about right because the Chiefs' red zone defense is 30th in the NFL. They're not good at stopping teams in there. So that would play out to your point. Mike, I, I am not lying to you. I had a final of 30-28 Eagles. My, that was my, so wow. I'm a slight so you cover. Got the cover. I covered the hook. You didn't cover the hook. <laughs> but your money line I, came I, I, through. I, listen, I am terrified of the freaking hook in this hook. game. I hate the because hook. Because it's, it's so easy to go, oh, he yeah. has a point of handle. Yeah. That's an easy cover, man. That's why I think it's just going to be a one-point game, so I'm staying away from it. I, I think this game gets sealed. Like, I think this is a sweat game. I think it's a, it's a last five minutes, and we're all in agony. Kind of, I hate to say it. I, I wish it wasn't, but that's what I think. Well, Patrick Mahomes certainly well, leads to that. Yeah, sure. Here's what I'm going to give you, all right? all right? Mark it down. For the second time in five years, Brandon Graham will get a strip sack. <laughs> this time will be a Patrick Mahomes, and the Eagles will recover and ice the clock. That's how this will end. And in, in two consecutive Super Bowls, they will have slayed the evil empire and the GOAT coach and the GOAT quarterback, <laughs> and then Big Red, their old coach, and Patrick Mahomes. That's how this game <laughs> is sealed, guys. Wow. All right, let's, let's take a break. Uh, Mark Forsetta has a, 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 a yellow legal pad full of stats. That is yes. correct. And, and so I don't want to waste that. He put a lot of effort into this. So <laughs> uh, let's take They're a break. They're just doodles. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'll come back. And Mark, I want you to go over some of the numbers that you've compiled uh, for the people because you know, they're all stats that will help the people decide and make them feel more confident or whatever. Sure. So it, it is the Road to Glendale show. We're, we're live from the halls of IBEW 98 with a monster pep Great rally crowd. going on. Everybody wearing eagle gear. Yeah, I don't I usually take out the, the anything. You got uh, the lid, man. I yeah, like I, it. I don't usually brand, but I, I did bring out the Eagles hat today in, yep. in, uh, in lieu of uh, what's, what, Joe, right. what do you say? Pep you rally. going to take a break? All right. Fun show, and, what a great and, uh, crowd, man. so so here's the thing. Let's 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 make it unfun by getting into stats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know oh, you're yes. enjoying yourself. Oh, yes, yes. Let's put a halt right, so, to that. Because I get like Forsett is prepared. He is prepared. You know, we, we we've been doing these shows all week, and we're like kind of I'm just yeah, like sad into death. But yeah. but Forsett has got it all laid out. And he's got it columns and the whole bit. So Mark, <laughs> so Mark, uh, yes. Uh, get, D give me your analysis based off your legal pad numbers. My, first off, I just want you to, you haven't pointed out yet, this is an elongated legal pad. It is. This isn't just your average show 8 by 11. You know what I'm saying? It's a nice one. Thank you. <laughs> Looking at the stats, Mike, the number one thing that jumps out to me is, you know, Travis Kelsey, that Travis Kelsey fella is uh, pretty good at being a tight nah. end. The Eagles, did you know, are the fifth best team defending against tight ends this season. I like that. Did you know that? And they allow only a passer rating 
Completion percentage of 80. Excuse me, not completion percentage. Passer rating of 80.5 against tight ends this season. So my prediction is Travis Kelsey is going to play terrible in this game. Wow. And the Eagles on top of that and taking away the best weapon that the Kansas City Chiefs have other than Patrick Mahomes himself is that they will just keep the ball away from Patrick Mahomes himself. And that goes back to the stats that you look at. When you talk about these offenses, they are separated by about two slots from top to bottom. When you talk about passing numbers, you can talk about how great they are as a passing team. Eagles are even right there in the top 10 still. Yards per game, one versus three. Points per game, one versus three. Separated by just one point per game. But the biggest thing here is the running offense. When you talk about the fifth best rushing attack in all the NFL with Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Kenny Gainwell, and little sprinkles of Boston Scott versus the 20th running attack in the NFL. That's those two things right there when you talk about how the Eagles defend against the tight end and how the Eagles can run the football are going to be the biggest factors in this game outside just the line of scrimmage. This offensive line versus their defensive line and our defensive line versus their offensive line. Those are the numbers that jump out to me in this game. Great numbers. They are great numbers. Yeah. They're also something like an 80 rating against number one wide receivers, too, the, the Eagles. Yeah, you were talking about that yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yep. which the Chiefs don't have anyway, so <laughs> it's an irrelevant stat. That's pretty good. Now, what do you got over here on the, the key matchup? Oh, we got no, there's, a, there's, a, there's a pie chart there, I just said. <laughs> pie chart, yes, exactly. You go over your key matchups yeah. here, Mark. I have to relate it to food if I'm going to remember okay. it. Uh, okay. So, we obviously mentioned earlier, Rob, you said have Hassan Reddick versus Andrew Wiley for that. Hassan Reddick is most often than not, more often than not, lined up over uh, your uh, your right tackle in those scenarios. Then you got Josh Sweat. And here's what's so amazing about this. The diversity of the Eagles' defensive line. I think most people know going into this game, Chris Jones is the guy yep. on the defensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs that you have to be aware of. Well, Chris Jones is going to be going against a bunch of pro bowlers on this offensive line, not to mention a Hall of Famer in Jason Kelsey, maybe a future Hall of Famer and some other, other guys they have in this offensive line that still have a lot to prove. Lane Johnson probably the next closest, yeah. right, to getting yep. that bid. So where's Chris Jones going to go? Who's the next guy that's going to attack through that defensive line? Well, let me counter. Go for it. Because Chris Jones uh, has a 20-and-a-half uh, pressure rate when double team best in the NFL well, it's incredible. Yeah, right it's incredible. It's the best in the NFL so uh I, listen I love Jason Kelsey that dude's a beast yeah. and so the guards with Kelsey uh it, it, to me is it, also as a key matchup the other key matchup I see is on the other side of that line Frank Clark and Carl Loftus against arguably their their weakest offensive lineman right now efficiency wise which is my lotta mm -hmm. So, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create worries here. I'll give you one more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you're talking about the guards, Mike. Uh, how's that elbow going to hold up with Landon Dickerson? Right. You know, and if that, if that becomes an issue, then there's a trickle-down effect. Are you throwing Dillard in there at guard? You know, I mean, do you do go Driscoll route, which hasn't been great? Mm -hmm. That's a concern. Probably it would behoove them then to move Jones, you know, in, oh. in those kind of areas. That yeah. They, to see how that but, works But out. if you want to feel good, they did a phenomenal job on Bosa. Uh, you know, right. and, and I know what you guys are saying. Mm. You know, Jones appears to be a, a, a much more, you know, dangerous. Intense and heavier mm. guy. And, and <laughs> interior, yeah. yeah. Correct. And, and by the way, can we just for one second, have you ever, ever experienced more whining crybaby biatches <laughs> the than these 49ers? Uh, they have now, they're in the conversation with the Cowboys now as, in terms of weaseldom. I go there, and I go to the New Orleans Saints. Good if you remember God. the Saints from five years ago, yeah, the Miracle, the they, yeah, Miracle. Yeah. Like, dude, you lost. I, it is amazing that it's still two weeks later, and it's at this level. When they're kickers. kickers. When they're kickers. kickers. When Robbie Gold starts talking about how oh, we would have beat him. You're Penn it, State guy, If Mike. our third-string quarterback would have stayed healthy, we yeah. would have won. Ridiculous. First of all, that, that, that was the ultimate violation I've ever seen, that, that some— that a media person, forget about probably what he said, yeah. the media person would solicit opinions from a freaking kicker. It was the uh, biggest uh, suck-up, uh, brown-nosing. Are you kidding me? It, it, was, it was 101 in terms of interviewing <laughs> suck-up that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And then he, and then he had Debo Samuel, and he almost messed himself with Debo. It was like, come on, dude.
And yeah, Brandon right. Ayoko was one of the guys that also started the trend. Yeah. He had one catch for 10 yards one against Seattle. Okay. All yeah. right. Now, you want to say you had a third string and then a fourth string quarterback? Right. But fine. Say that. You had two catches against the yeah. Dallas Cowboys in the previous week at home. Ah, uh, they're exhausting. They are. They're just exhausting. Thank you for bringing that up because I love San Francisco. I love going out there. But man, those Niners fans could not. Look, I know it's cliche at this point, but whiners. The San Francisco 40 whiners yes. definitely hits if home for those guys. If there were kids here, Mike, I would have used a heavier one. <laughs> <I tried laughs> yeah, to it was totally disappointing. I, listen, I, wanna, I don't wanna normally want to rip Philly guys, but I have to because this is fresh. Oh, no. The oh. last night at the Sixers game, oh. she Wallace, oh. yeah. who's Come some on. kind of Kansas City Chiefs fan. Well, I, listen, I, that's a violation in itself. But I, I, even if you are, like, you can choose to wear that gear any minute of any day. Yeah. You don't wear it and disrespect your own city at a Sixers yes. game. Am I right or am For I wrong? someone who takes such pride in Philadelphia, as oh. he does, and I love that, it's weak. First That's of all, totally and, and his, his reasoning was, when I was a kid, the Eagles weren't great, and the games were blacked out. That makes it all the more worse. Yeah, really, bandwagon. It's exactly. the same foolish reasoning, but, but even if you want to be a Chiefs fan, the one thing you don't do is you, you don't... No. Embarrass your city by by doing that to be a contrarian. No. He was trolling you know? us. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't just... bother. The, he is a diehard Flyers fan. He is openly rooted for the Flyers during post game press conferences. I've seen him in the jersey and, yeah. and actually rooting for those guys back in the, like the Leclerc days and those guys. But he has done that openly. How did the Eagles just bypass yeah, him? Yeah, strange. It's very strange. I don't like it. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> Shame on you, Rashid. Yeah, right. You're better oh, yeah, than come, that. Come on, Rashid. You're better and than Robbie that. Gold, listen. All right, you went to Penn State. I have no respect for <laughs> I, know, I have no respect for kickers in general, much less when you're trying to analyze football. I, how many camps have we been? Well, we see this is people say, "Why do you hate kickers?" I go, they're, "I don't. I they're, they're not they're not football players. Like I don't hate them generally as yeah. people. Yeah. They're just not football players, right. and they're they're a, a paid mercenary and they're a necessary evil. Yes. But I've been to so many camps where I see guys sweat their ass off yeah. Yeah. and hit each other and. And, and they go through these trials and tribulations of a training camp. And these guys, are, I literally saw Akers with Dirk Johnson. <laughs> Dirk throw, Johnson. Right. Throwing a beach ball around. <laughs> and, and they're down. And like, I go, well, how do you respect that? Yes. You are like my grandparents when it comes to children. You should be seen and not heard. Correct. When you look at kickers, <laughs> they should be seen and not heard. That's yeah. pretty much your well, philosophy. Look, and then always get this when a, when a kicker makes a field goal to win a game. Yeah, oh, Mike. Kickers aren't important in the game, are they? Like, oh, they're, yeah, they're important because they score points, but in the overall scope yeah. of the football thing, they're yeah. not. I Would like you eliminate kickers? And I resent them. Would you elim eliminate uh, field goals? necessary evil. I like necessary evil. <laughs> That's like what that. they are. They're you necessary hate kickers. Evil. God bless you. Yes. All right, let's talk about Andy Reid, fellas. <laughs> I've had a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 everybody loves him now. Yeah. And he was a head coach here. I didn't love him. Yeah. And, and maybe it's me. And so I'm it's like, have you guys like psychoanalyzed me here on why I, 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 the way I looked at him is he was stubborn to the point where it hurt the team yes. when he was here. Now, he's learned to do other things and he evolved and he's probably gonna be in a Hall of Fame coach. Well, how did you feel about him as a head coach here? Well, can we just stop? Like, like for me, more than anything else, it was time to move on. It's okay. It's like a bad marriage or a marriage that comes to a conclusion. You had some nice, beautiful kids. There's some good things you liked. It's great. But then it was time to move on. And for both parties, they found better spouses. And that's okay, too. It's all right. Yeah. It doesn't mean anybody's a bad guy or this or that. But let's not forget what it was. He, he won a lot of games. No question about it. But back to what you were saying. The refusal to get a receiver in there because the system was so good until T.O., Right, that cost you. There's no other way to look at it. The, the refusal to run the ball in certain situations, like the NFC Championship game against the, the Bucks, the last game at the vet, my, my hoodie that I'm wearing right now. That hurt you. There's no denying it. He won a lot. He laid the foundation for a lot of what the Eagles do philosophically now, but it was time to move on. That's where I'm at. And you know what? Like, I don't, nobody owes him an apology or a parade, <laughs> none of that. It was time to move on. You know, it, it's, it's so great because you, you hear uh, people from outside here, like the national media, whoever, who, who, don't, who have no right to comment on anything inside what we have observed our entire lives, like every snap and every play, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So now, now the thing with Andy Reid is, well, 
uh, you know, all, all the guy did was get you here and you fired him. Yeah. You uh, ran him out of town. You ran, ran him out. out of town. You know and I go, he, he was here for 14 years. And at the time, when, when things started to go bad, I go, there has only been one other coach in the NFL who was allowed to coach that long without winning a championship. Do you remember who that coach was? Schottenheimer? No, it was Jeff Fisher. Oh, Jeff Fisher. Yeah. Who was allowed to coach 16-plus yeah. yeah. years yeah. for the Rams and not win anything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I always answer, though, well, okay, like, after 14 years he hasn't won anything, isn't it time for new blood? Well, here's the thing. I did two separate, I did one TV, one radio hit in Kansas City. Both the leading question involved the phrase running Andy Reid out of town. Yep. Running <laughs> yeah. Andy Reid out, right him out of town. 14 years yeah. he was in, if at most we power walked him out yeah. of town. Yeah. It was time to move on from Andy Reid. And here's the thing, if the Eagles didn't win that Super Bowl five years ago, I would still not like Andy Reid. All right. The fact that the Eagles did win the Super Bowl, Rob, to use your analogy, we moved on to a, a, another wife, a better wife, yeah. and now we don't feel so bad about the yeah. old wife. Yeah. The fact that Doug Peterson came in here, he won. We feel better about the Andy Reid era because we can just look back on it now and say, you know what? It was the most, it was the longest sustained success the Eagles had in terms of always being in it. But when it came to that one thing to push you over the top, he never did it. You can't get away from the fact that they were favored in games at home, Mike, right. in NFC Championship Three games of them. that they didn't win. Are we just Two, overlooking yeah. that part of it? Two at home and then uh, one against Arizona. Uh, and the same thing applies to McNabb. I'm seeing Donovan now talking. Uh, and Donovan, uh, like, I, like I have a, a, a reality check on Donovan. He was the best quarterback in, in Eagles franchise history. But people from outside go, well, you never appreciated Donovan McNabb. And I go, you did not see every snap. You did not see the man not play his best in the most important moments yes. of his career. And that's what we, that's what sticks with us. Yeah. I blame Donovan for not winning more so than I blame Reed for not winning. Yeah, I do too. Because when I look back on Donovan's career, and I look at the first three years of his career, four years of his career, I looked at a guy that was like, oh my, this guy's incredible. He can run so well. He, he's got a, a cannon for an arm. He throws a deep ball incredibly, all that stuff. Yes, we have the worm burners on the short throws and all that stuff, we'll acknowledge it. But if you look at how he played in the beginning and look how he played at the end, he didn't get better as a quarterback. He kind of stayed at that same level. And then when everything hit the fan with T.O., I realized with Donovan, for me at least, there was something more important to Donovan than winning. And it was being the reason for winning. If you had anybody else come in here other than Brian Westbrook, who was obviously born and bred Philadelphia Eagles, right? Drafted here, everything. He didn't want to give knowledge or acknowledge or give credit to anybody else bigger than him. And maybe, just maybe, to the thing I just ripped Reed for, maybe Reed knew that and had to be careful with bringing somebody else in for right. a while and thought that and finally said, you know, yeah. screw it, I'm going with T.O. But whatever, and they're so tied at the hip, it's hard to separate them in a lot of ways. It, but it, it is. It wasn't enough. It, it, it was good, but it and, wasn't enough. And the last five minutes of the Super Bowl, I absolutely put on Donovan and not on Andy. Same. Let's not forget that when, when, uh, when Donovan went to, the, uh, to Washington, yeah. he got benched for Rex Grossman in a two-minute drill against the Lions because he didn't know the offense in the two-minute drill. Oof. Uh, you know, I would, all week, we're going to take a break. Why are you bringing this seconds. up? Come I'm not, on, Mike. I'm, I'm now angry up, again. Right, to, to I'm, 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 I'm to, like 25 to, all over again <laughs> and pissed off. <laughs> just to put a cap on the Andy Reid thing, I, I'm always <laughs> amused at the people that have the food questions to Andy. He's gotten them his entire, entire life. And, and, and during the NFL opening night, uh, uh, many yeah. food questions. So I go, okay, I'm finally over the food thing. I'm on Andy Reid. So I turned on, last night I turned on di uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives. Nice. <laughs> okay. Right? And, who, and who's on it? Andy Reid. Andy Reid <laughs> escorting Guy Fieri through, through uh, the, the, the good eating spots of Kansas City. And his favorite joint, Rob and Mark, is Pigwitch. 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 Pigwitch sandwiches in Kansas City. Yeah. So if you're ever in Kansas City, Andy Reid endorses a place called Pigwitch. If I have to hear one more cheeseburger joke, <laughs> uh, I mean, just get new material. Talk about chili or ribs. I can't. <laughs> Andy, how many times are you going to the cheeseburger thing? Yeah. All right, we got to go. All right, let's take a break. It is the Road to Glendale live from IBEW 98. We're back after this. Why do millions of people every year from around the world visit Philly's Rocky statue? You want to tell me the sky is burgundy with green stripes and yellow polka dots? I'll meet you on that. But you're never going to convince me Rocky is anything other than the pure greatness that it is never going to happen. Join me, Paul Farber, for WHYY's The Statue. We're going on a journey to explore the biography of the Rocky statue. 
Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Yes, we do have a special guest. We have the man who runs the joint. Yes. The IBEW <laughs> business manager on the A, Mr. Mark Lynch. Hello, Hi, Mark. Scott. How are you? How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I like the lid, man. It's a sweet, yeah. sweet hat. Mark, let me tell you this real quick. I, I lived 20 years in the Spring Garden Fairmount area of Philadelphia, most of my adult life. I had never been in this building up until about two hours ago. I didn't realize you guys had, like, a party palace. <laughs> yeah, down we, can throw good party. we can throw a good party, I can tell you that much. We appreciate you guys coming down and yeah. spending some time with us. Uh, what are better. your views on this game here, Mark? I am... Uh, I don't want to be the jinx, but I'm overly confident right oh, now. No, <laughs> another, another one. one. Another one. Right. Another I'm, one. I feel very. Uh, oh man. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna win. I think their defense is gonna literally go after Mahomes from the set. So I'm gonna call it now. They're gonna win the Super Bowl. So we'll be having a uh, big, big parade on Thursday. So. Uh, well, Thursday. He's got the. He already knows the date. You have inside information. I might have just leaked it. Possibly. Oh, oh my God. Yes. We're breaking <laughs> news. Inside information. Yeah. We are breaking news right now. Yes. Yeah, see, he's in the know. Look at him. He's, know, he's, right? he's, he's connected to the yes, to the front office of yes. the city. Yes. The guys, got to come here more. So. What was it like five years ago uh, in this area when the Eagles won? This whole scene had to be a whole party. Yeah, it was incredible. It's one of the things we haven't had here in a long time. So, you know, seeing the family members and all of the, the membership coming out and the kids celebrating together was something incredible. Be able, like I said, you look around the, the, the room, there's hundreds and hundreds of members and kids everywhere. And, and that's what Local 90 is all about, the family. So, How sure. did you put this whole thing together? How, how, how much notice did you have to, to throw this together? You here? know, it's funny. It wasn't um, <laughs> that much notice. It was about three weeks. <laughs> so... Uh, I was one of the things you said, you know what, we're going to go with it. So we're talking with Frank and Krause and uh, a friend of ours, Brian, over there. We said, let's do it. And obviously, it worked out because you see the kids and everybody having fun. So. I got to give a shout out my brother-in-law, Terry. Terry Foy is a local 98 there guy. You go. Right there with my, my niece, Lucy. That's so you got to right. give all the best gigs. Terry needs all the best, <laughs> best jobs. I might know somebody. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Now, you guys have done such a phenomenal job with this. You guys have the Lombardi trophy over there. Yeah. You guys got a, a Super Bowl ring over we there. Do. You got a helmet. And that's, I like how it's right next to the face painting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all great. All right, be honest. Have you ever taken the ring and just kind of walked around and, like, just blinged it out a little bit to show off? Got, Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> off, yeah. That's just between us. Maybe, yeah. Between us, all yes, right. of course. All right. Yeah. All right. So, um, are you, do you play any of these proposition bets? You know, you, 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 just, you know. Are, are, are um, you, not necessarily. You know? Maybe the game, put a dollar here or there, but you not put a necessarily. Dollar, you say, have you put yeah. a dollar on this game already? I might have. Oh, <laughs> yes. He's confident. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I you know, that, that, yeah. that, I know hook is nothing to him. <laughs> you know, I think we've all put a dollar or two on yes. this. Yes. Yes. Thing. I, I played a parlay for the first time. I hate par I don't oh, play parlay. I'm not a parlay guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to run it by you right, before all we all get right. out of the show, which I don't know. We might be here. Is it a mix and match? Well, I think we're still waiting for Joe Biden here. Joe Biden is here. Yeah. But in any event, listen, man, thank you for having us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and shout out to the membership and the family and the kids. You know, it's yeah. a shout out to the membership. Now, so thank them. The membership. Yep, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Go Birds. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Go Birds. Appreciate right, brother. Thank Go you. Birds. Yes. Uh, all right, so it's, it's time for our final numbers here, uh, our final predictions. So uh, we'll close it down. I'll get a Mark Farzetta. Uh, who's got it all mapped out. He's yeah, got a mathematical the, it's formula. It's on the pad. And uh, he has spit out a number. What is it, Mark? My number for this game is that the Philadelphia Eagles will beat the Kansas City Chiefs 34-27. See on Broad Street. Yes. yes. Let's go. All right. 34-27, Mr. Can, can Rob we, Ellis. Can we just acknowledge one thing? My notes on my notepad. No notes. Rob's notepad. Rob's got it. <laughs> now, I do have other notes. You have the memory of a, no, he's, he's a steel got, trap. Yeah, see, he's got it. Uh, he, 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 he wanted to take fresh notes based on your notes. Yeah, I'm working <laughs> off of you, Mark. So that's why he's yes. got a blind I page. learned it from you. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I'll take the Eagles 31. That means four touchdowns and a, and a, and a boot. And uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, 30. 31-30 to the Eagles scoring Whoa. more touchdowns than the Chiefs, Woo! and they win it. 
Doesn't matter about how many points they win it. A lot of overs. That's three overs, still. <laughs> they, over, they, over under 51. They, yeah, I think it's going to score in this game. All right. Uh, yeah. all right, let's close it down. Thank you very so much for watching The Road to Glendale, the final show before we get to the big game tomorrow. And it's just a matter of wasting away the hours until we get to the kickoff. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Go Birds! We'll see you! <laughs>